This is one of the deadliest animals known to humans. It causes up to 1 million deaths every year. And uh, today I'll put it under the microscope. So hi, hello and welcome to my channel again, Microbe Hunter here. And yes, uh, today uh, I'd like uh, to put uh, another water sample under the microscope. I found a bird bath here in the garden and there are some interesting little things swimming in the water, quite well visible with the unaided eye. And uh, I'm quite sure that these are larvae, possibly of mosquito. And uh, I'd like uh, to catch a few of them and uh, put them uh, under the microscope. Now, mosquitoes are known to spread many diseases. Malaria is probably one of the more commonly known ones. And for this reason, um, you have to make sure that there is not much standing water in the area. So you have to block uh, the reproduction of those mosquitoes. And in some countries, uh, the laws are pretty strict uh, about having standing water in your household. You actually might uh, get fined. But luckily in the area where I live, uh, the mosquitoes do not transmit uh, any dangerous uh, diseases. And of course, it also depends quite a bit on the species of mosquito because not all mosquitoes transmit all diseases. But still, um, it's a good idea to reduce a little bit the number of mosquitoes because <laughs> after all, they are a nuisance whether or not uh, they spread diseases or not. Now I caught around, I don't know, four, five or six um, yeah, larvae. And uh, I see that they're pretty, pretty large, really. Um, I don't know uh, what, eight millimeters uh, in length even. Um, and uh, that's pretty large. And I would say even too large uh, to put on a normal microscope slide. But at home I have so-called concave slides. These are slides with an indentation. And uh, these slides are suitable also for thicker and larger specimens. Um, so I'll be able to put them under the microscope, but they're always constantly moving around. So it still might be a little bit difficult uh, to make sure that they don't uh, move around too much. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll experiment around a little bit and I'll see what I can do. Well, back at home, um, I wanted to get them out uh, of my plastic tube and I had to cut off the tip uh, of a disposable pipette because the opening was a little bit too small. And I was able to yeah, pull out uh, two of these mosquito larvae and I had a close look at them first. Uh, well, and there was only one of them in it first and then the other one was still stuck in the pipette. And here we go, here there are two of them. And uh, then I put them on a concave microscope slide. Uh, those microscope slides have a small indentation as I already told you. And this prevents uh, the mosquito larvae from being squashed. Yeah, there's also, of course, a small air bubble, actually an advantage uh, because those air bubbles restrict the movement of the larvae a little bit. Those mosquito larvae are also referred to as <laughs> wigglers because they like to wiggle around a lot. Indeed, they are a little bit difficult to observe under the microscope because they move so quickly and they are fairly large. Uh, so I'm using, in most of the cases here, I'm using the low magnification objective. I've of course also tried out uh, different lighting techniques here. And uh, as always in, on the bottom, you are able to see the air bubble. And uh, this air bubble not only gives the mosquito a little bit of air, but also so limits its, its movement a little bit. Now, if you look very carefully, uh, the backside, the tail, so to say, of this larvae is actually used for breathing. You don't see it here quite well, but uh, the larvae, what they do is, is they like to swim to the surface of the water and they like to put their little back end into the air. And uh, this is how, uh, how they're able to breathe. Now, what they do is as they grow, they mold. So this means they shed off uh, their outer skin and uh, this is how they grow. And uh, ultimately, uh, the yeah, the adult mosquito will emerge. Uh, the females, they like uh, to suck blood. They need that, of course, to make the eggs. And uh, then the eggs are laid again in the water and the life cycle um, is uh, completed. Now, I remember quite well that uh, back in the 1980s and 1990s, when HIV AIDS uh, started to, to become more um, well known, uh, some scientists were really worried uh, whether mosquitoes are actually also able to transmit HIV AIDS. And luckily, this is not the case. And as a matter of fact, scientists found out uh, that the HIV virus, the AIDS virus, is not able to survive in the mosquito for a very long time. But mosquitoes are known to transmit uh, a lot of other diseases, as I already mentioned. Yeah, here you could just see the tail of the mosquito um, uh, quite well. 
Those mosquitoes are larvae also have a lot of hair, uh, many hair um, around them. And uh, you can also see that the head is pretty large and there are two, those two tiny antenna there as well. Um, I personally am always fascinated uh, about the life cycle of insects uh, because I've also been growing butterflies. And uh, after metamorphosis, the adult always looks uh, quite different uh, from the larvae. In many cases, I think it's uh, quite interesting how uh, the body shape uh, is able to change. So, well, I do hope uh, that uh, you liked uh, this video and that uh, it was interesting for you. Yes, please do consider subscribing to this channel if you like these type of videos. But for today, I think uh, I'm just gonna call it a day and uh, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.